Hi, my name is Timmy. I'm the Senior Product Manager at Paystack. Um, I've been working in technology in the business <laughs> about 15 years now. We were from e commerce to travel tech to consulting. So um, I have a lot of experience just like working with tech brands in general and then fintechs in specific. So TechPoint has asked me to do a little presentation on how to make your fintech brand stand out. I'm going to sit down and take the analytic that person. So it's going to be a fun, interactive kind of session. Okay. <laughs> Are you telling I'm shy? Um, I won't be able to see the screen. So is here good? Okay. Um, so yeah, this is just a little bit about me. I started as my career as a developer, and then I pivoted to product management, and then um, did, I also worked as a digital, in a digital marketing to another digital marketing team for Canal for a while. Um, I worked as a consultant at KPMG, and then I also worked as a product manager in Conga, and now I'm a product manager for Paystack. So like I was saying, I'm all over the place, <laughs> doing a lot of things and helping people figure out how to build brands at scale and help things to build companies at scale, specifically in the tech space. So, um, next slide, please. So I think we can just get started. So, um, sorry, next slide, please. Uh, okay, yes, so today we're gonna to be talking a little bit about how to make your FinTech product stand out. So, first slide, I have a question for all of you. So next slide, please. So, oh, before questions, we'll talk a little bit about what is what does it actually mean to stand out, why you should um, stand out, and then how to actually build a product and make it stand out. Then we'll talk a little bit about storytelling, and then we'll close up from there and you can ask any questions you like. So next slide, please. So let's play a little game, a little exercise. Um, so next slide. What, when I say just do it, what comes to mind? Exactly, next slide. Thank you, you're all very well. Um, let's try one more. Next slide, please. Let's see my best. Exactly, next slide. Exactly, so next slide. So let's talk about standing out. The two things that those two phrases have in common, that they're very popular, they're just words, but, but I can say just do it, and almost everyone in the room just like Nike. That's what standing out means as a brand. That means that, sorry, next, next slide please. Standing out means that people recognize you. Um, if Beyonce walked into the room now, none of you would be looking at my face. Because you will instantly recognize her face, and she has become a brand in and of itself. But the most important thing about standing out is, sorry, next slide, please, is standing out to people who matter. When it comes to branding, a lot of people just, it's, for some people it's enough to be famous, right? And everybody who knows your name. But when it comes to being a company or being, um, like, especially with FinTech and tech in general, it's very important to be recognized by the people who matter. And so, who matters? Primarily, it's going to be your customers, right? The people who are actually going to make your business successful. People should see your logo, your face, your whatever to brand your company and instantly know who you are. So it's not enough. A lot. It's very easy to buy fame, right? You can just go if you have a ton of money. You can just go on every network and start plus. And everyone know who you are. But it's more important, but that a lot of times that does not lead to success for brands because all these people, a product isn't relevant. So we talked a little bit about standing out. How do you stand out? Are you going to be like Mr. Bean, jumping up and down, making funny faces? Probably not. I mean, you can't. Probably not. Especially not in the big tech space. So next slide, please. So, you stand out when you're different. You stand out when you dream big and when you do amazing things. So if I asked by show of hands, who has heard of Paystack before? Most of the room. And most people, well, not, let me not say most people, but a lot of people 
a pace that probably got acquired by Stripe for $200 million. And I was like, oh my gosh. Nigeria, in Outside of the stuff that we did in the Nigerian ecosystem that made a lot of people in the fintech space know us, a lot of people outside of the fintech space now know us because of this massive, awesome thing that we did. Right? So this is the kind of thing that you should be aspiring for when you're trying to make your band stand out, is what are the things that, that are awesome? Next slide, please. So building a product that stands out. Uh, you have a question? Yeah, okay. Yes, so why is that? Thank you. Why is standing out in court? Um, in one of the other sessions, back one. If you can go back, back a slide, please. Yes. Back one more. Forward one. This one. Yes. I think that one's after this one. Okay. So the point is, why, why is it important that you stand out in the fintech space? As of now, there are over 200 fintech startups in Nigeria alone. And like, that may not... Um, yeah, that's a lot of competition, right? And you have to have your product stand out amongst all this. So if you're starting off now, you're competing with the Flutterways, the Paystacks, the Interswitchly, the people who have been doing it for the last five to 10 to 20 years. Standing out is really, really important and it's even more difficult. With every passing day, it becomes more difficult because every day more and more face because it's very attractive because we have these big companies who are doing so well, like Flutterwave and Interswitch and uh, Ada and the full list of people that can sponsor events like this, right? So it's really important to stand out. Next slide. Yes. So how do you actually stand out? And this is the meat of the presentation. Um, you don't have to do anything outlandish. You don't have to have like weird catchphrases, buzzing down everywhere, or jumping around, or having a CEO that's tweeting interesting things, or like, you know. Um, there are lots of ways to stand out, but we've, I've seen in my career that the most important one is to build a product that stands out. Um, and that's kind of what I want to go into today. So next slide, please. Okay, so the first thing you need to do if you're going to build a product that stands out is understand the market that you're... Understand... <laughs> um, understand the market that you're building for. It's really, really important to have an in-depth understanding of your customer. The, one of the biggest problems that Young, young and new CEOs, young and new product managers, anybody who's building for everyone else faces is self-bias. The biases that you have. So for example, one of the things that frustrates me is I, the amount of energy it takes to, for me to go into a bank. I hate going into a bank. Like, I will do anything. Is that I will call everybody I know. Do you have an account officer? Do you have somebody? Can you email me the form? I don't want to go into the bank, right? That's a very personal problem. The biggest mistake that I can make is to assume that that is everybody else's problem. And if I start building something based on that, like, oh, how can we keep people in, people out of the bank? It will only appeal to me and the people exactly like me. And even though there are lots of there, 200 and something million of us, like that may be a very small percent, maybe one percent of the population. Or you know, people love banks. I don't know like who does, but there are people who love going into the bank or like having that experience. Oh, that experience is worth lots to them. So you have to deeply understand who you're building for before you even start, before you write a line of code, before you hire an engineer, before you create a logo, before you do anything. Understand who you're building for. Next slide, please. So the next important thing is that once you have a very good understanding of who you're building for, you start to under you start to figure out what you're solving for them. The biggest, the second biggest mistake, apart from like looking at your own biases and figuring that out, is actually figuring out what problem are you solving. And I can give pace. I'll keep using pace tag, unfortunately, because it's my most recent experience. When pace tag first started, I, I didn't work for them. Um, I was a developer and I used to tell people you, there is not enough money that you can give me to integrate payments into a website. It's just not, because I had a full-time job 
and it was so time consuming. Yes, 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 you have to go to the bank to get a form. You already know how I feel about going into the bank. You have to go into the bank to get a form. You have to pay, I think it was 300,000 Naira back in like 2012. And that was money. That was more than like five times my salary, right? So it was just this, and it took weeks, and you had to do UAT testing, and you had to go back into the bank and talk to the tech team, and it was so stressful. And then Paystack popped up, and it was just like, hey, call this endpoint as a developer, like write this line of code, and all of a sudden I can accept payments. And it was like, mind blowing. And I remember even then saying, I'm going to work in this company whether they like it or not. Um, so identify the problem. One of the reasons why Paystack is so successful is because Shola and Ezra worked in the financial space, and they understood how painful integrating that problem is. So it's not about creating fancy tech, it's not about building a pretty, um, a pretty app or a pretty website. Those things help you when you have the actual problem, but first you have to know that problem, and you know that problem by talking to your customers, right? Um, the other thing is that I see is like a lot of clones. So everybody's like, oh, we are now, we want to clone paste that. It's great. You can build a very sustainable business by copying competition, but you will never build a brand that stands out if you just photocopy somebody else. Because the first question everyone will ask you is like, why should I use you instead of using Pista? Why should I use you instead of using Flutterwave? Even the companies that you think do the exact same thing approach their customers differently and solve different problems. And we talked about Nike earlier. I'm wearing Nike shoes today. Adidas goes after a very different market than Nike does. Nike says we are a sports brand, and they design all their language around sports, and we are performance. If you want to win competitions, buy Nike, and that's what they package and sell, which is very different from the sneakers that Balenciaga sells. Right? Balenciaga says we're a fashion brand. If you run in this one, you're yeah, doing yourself. You really are here to stand out and look pretty and everyone knows how much money you have. So if you understand your customer and you understand the problem that you're solving for them, you can start to build a brand that matters. So next slide, please. So yeah, we talked about not copying your competition, like just looking at like, okay, they did this this week, yeah, let's do it. And then copying and changing the colors. Um, but we see that a lot in the, in the fintech space and you can do it and it works. There are lots of successful companies. In fact, copying is low-key what Paystack is, but they copied from someone who didn't operate in their market, right? So if you hear Shola talk about Paystack, he talks about it's the strike for Africa, because there was no strike for Africa when they started. So you can't copy but copy when, if that makes sense. Copy things that work, but localize for your market. Next slide, please. So this slide is, this is one of my favorites. I love Venn diagrams, by the way. This is one of my favorite Venn diagrams in the world. When you figure out your problem, you have to figure out how you're going to be unique for your customer. And there are usually three different flavors. You can either be the best, so you can be good, it just works. You can be fast, it just like, it's super quick. Or it can be cheap, it can be the most affordable option in the market. Unfortunately, when they all connect, that doesn't exist in the real world. Over and over again, lots of companies have done the studies. You see it in marketing all the time. Your best carpenter will never be the fastest and cheapest carpenter. The best designer will maybe, will be, maybe he may be fast and maybe he may be brilliant, but he will charge you a lot of money. <laughs> so look at this, as you're thinking of your brand and thinking of what you're trying to build, look in the circle and say, where do I want to play? What, which one appeals to me the most? For some people, there are fintech brands that says, look, we're just going to take transfers products and we're going to, nobody's going to beat us on pricing. And we're going to do everything we can to get that price down to, if we can do zero, that would be ideal. But if you try to chase all of them, you will fail at all of them because it's not really possible, right? So pick, I would say pick one. A lot of really good brands pick two, but start with one and you can expand to the second lever. But don't try and trace all three because then you nobody will know what you stand for and that's a big part of branding and we'll talk about that in a, a little bit later so pick one or two and next slide please go hard the brands that stand out the most are the ones that will that naturally seek out where they fit in the world right so if you are solving a very unique problem so for example if a bank woke up today 
and their mission statement was, you will never come into the branch. How fast do you think I'll sign up for an account? Like, I won't even blink. You will just be like, okay, where is it? Where is the link? Oh, yeah, give me, give me, give me, give me. Take all my money. I'm going to move all my six bank accounts. I'm going to close them and move all my money to you because that's a, an intimate problem. And if you lean into that problem, you'll be a standout brand for the people who matter. Next slide, please. So, how do you, now that you have a brand, you have you know the problem, everything, okay, now how do you now start communicating it to your users? And the most effective and most powerful tool that we have as human beings is storytelling. Uh, next slide, please. So, storytelling is used in so many, so, so many ways. If you look into the world, start looking for stories that people are telling you. I've told you probably like four stories already right now. They make things more relatable. They're how we connect. It's how we pass history. Marketing is just literally one big storytelling mission. Um, it's how we communicate our experiences. As human beings, we have a very deep, profound connection to, his, to stories. We love stories. The movie industry is massive. Video games, everything around storytelling for human beings is a massive industry because this is how we communicate with each other. You can create emotions. Have you ever watched an ad that felt like crying? Or just like watched a movie and just been so happy at the end because the heroes won. That's storytelling. And all that emotion, it's not really real, right? So when, I don't, how many people like have watched, watched the first Black Panther? How many people were upset when T'Challa died in real life? Like, I was broken. And then I was like, what? you don't know this man from Adam. Like, all that emotion that I felt about this real life person was created from a fake story about a man who does not exist. That is the power of storytelling, and that's what you want to leverage in your brain. Next slide, please. So, how do you create the story for your brand? It exists, I've found, in two parts. The first one is in your customers. And the second sits in your organization. Next slide, please. So to figure out the story that you want to tell for your customers, your customer story, is you go back to why you built this. Why was this so important? So if I woke up and wanted to build this bank that you never have to come into a into the bank again, right? That I would start thinking about all the times where I have a deadline for a meeting, but I need to pay rent, and I had to go to the bank, and it was so stressful. I would start thinking of all those stories, and then I would think about like, okay, maybe I solved the problem for myself, and now I figured out that I can solve it for 10 other people. Why was it so important for me to solve that problem? That's where your brand story starts to lie. Um, when you start putting those things together, you'll start coming up with a picture of what your communication is about for your customers. Next slide, please. The next part, which is the part that a lot of people forget, is your brand story exists in your organization. And this is where you, as a founder or as the leader of a business, that's where you really come into play. Whenever you're starting a business or a venture or anything, you have to really think about the why, the what. What are the things that you deeply care about? What are the things that you want to see in the world? Um, like I said, I'll talk about this second, but hopefully I'll have some other examples. But one of the things that a lot of people know Paystack for is customer service. And Paystack has humble brand, one of the best customer service teams that um, in Nigeria. I say because I work there. <laughs> but a lot of times you also see it on Twitter, right? People are always bragging about you know, if you reach out to Paystack, we'll help you. And it comes from one of the missions, one of the, the core values of Paystack called practice kindness. So when you join the company, this is something that gets drilled into you. Practice kindness, practice kindness, practice kindness. And this is because the founders, this is what they want to see in the world. They want people to be kind to each other. They want people to treat each other like people. So if you think about the characteristics you want to see in the world, and you embed them into your organization, they will naturally extend it to everyone that they interact with. And that means your, your brand starts to build this personality for this, these characteristics. A lot of people say, oh, I don't care about corporate culture. Corporate culture is not anything. But every organization has corporate culture. You don't get more than 
five human beings in a room and they start to develop a culture. So look at those things, create core values and start building around that and use that to build your brand story. Next slide please, I'm running out of time. Um, how do you make it stick? So you now have a story, you know your problem, you have a story. How do you make it stick in people's minds? Next slide, I'll go very fast because I'm running out of time. You communicate consistently over and over and over again, but you don't say the same thing every single time. You say it in different ways. Every piece of communication you should, that you're sending out to your customers, that you're sending out to everybody, should have those things in your brand in mind. So when you want to send an email to your customer, if your core value is practice kindness, like pay stack, is this a kind email? Is this a, if your core value is being direct, like it is in some places, like Netflix has a very direct culture, so all their emails are very to the point, right? Next slide, please. It's all about building trust, and trust isn't just in good things. People can trust you for bad things. We trust our Nigeria government to make brand new notes for us, right? <laughs> we trust, you trust your parents to do, act in certain ways. So as your brand builds a personality, people should be able to trust you. And it's the reason why people can say, oh, if you reach out to Paystack, Paystack will answer you and solve your problem. Because over time, consistently for the last five years, we've had the same message and stayed on that brand in all our communication. We, are, we have SLAs around how quickly we have to respond to customers. So just that constant communication, saying the things that your business needs to say is very important. Next slide, please. So this is one of the most important things. A lot of people only communicate when they want to sell. No, communicate when things are good, communicate when it's bad, communicate when it's hard, and most important, next slide, communicate like a person. Because more and more we're finding that brands are just extensions of people, in fact, According to the law, the brand is a person, which is why it can own property. So when you're talking, remember that you're talking to people, you're not just this robot in the back of a room somewhere. It's actual life people that you're talking to and communicating to, and make sure to imbibe that in everything. So I think this is the last one. So thank you so much. Um, I don't know if we have time for questions. This is like a little summary. Figure out your problem, figure out your customers, Create a story around your customers and your organization and communicate it consistently and you'll have a brand that stands out. Thank you. Thank you for that, Timmy. So um, if you have any question for Timmy, you are um, you can see the back. All right. Yes, I think I have a question over here. Um, how does advantage of technology for this thing. Um, I have a question um, in the direction of scalability. Mm -hmm. right? From my experience, um, we have product, we've had some good partnerships, but we've also experienced very frequently that the big people that we partner in end up taking advantage of our service and start offering it to so, you. Know, sign a one year contract, hoping to renew, and they say, oh, we don't want to renew again. And then the next day you see they're doing exactly what you were offering them. So how do you think you can guide against that? With the, you know, as a small, you can't, you don't have enough resources to do numbers, so you want to partner with someone that can help you do that. Yeah, I will, uh, I will, it's a really good question. And I would say two things. The first one is, the market is big enough for, it. most markets are big enough for everyone. Right? So if someone is doing exactly what you do, it's a good, it's actually a good sign because it means that they are seeing signals that the market is expanding and there is space for more than you. But you're also competing with guys who are bigger than you, <laughs> so it becomes a little bit difficult, right? What I would say is lean into it and the best way that you can compete with them is if you understand the problems in that space more than anyone. And if you're doing, if you've been doing it longer, because they are new, odds are there is a lot of insight that you have that they don't. So there are two ways you can attack the problem. You can try to look at yourself as infrastructure and support them, or you can say, how can I be better at this than them? Because it's, it will be a natural choice for everyone to choose you if you are better consistently, right? Or you can think about what are the ways that I can play this game that I that they are not playing it or they are not really willing to do. It's 
is there a segment of the market that they're not willing to serve? So for example, if everyone is looking at the banked population, can I pivot into the unbanked? If everyone is looking at HNIs, can I look at medium class? Can I take something that was exclusive to a few people and democratize it so it's available to more? Or can I take, make it, take this thing and turn it into a luxury version of it? So just look at where they're playing, because everyone will, nobody, nobody can serve everyone. So if you look at what is, look for what is missing, either from the customer's perspective or from a business perspective, and try to like really go hard in those spaces, it makes it easier to compete. Uh, any other questions? Any other questions? Thank you. Um, my name is Max Bilodeau. I'm the director of Public Services at the Card. So uh, thank you so much for that clarification. Um, I want to speak like a lawyer, okay? <laughs> yes, so it all starts from um, the point to where you're entering into the contract, okay? There are clauses, so this is a really good advice. Yes, so there are clauses you can actually insert in your contract that will reduce the number of people that copy your brand or try to take advantage of the fact that you're, maybe you're not on that level yet, but you understand the brand and the cost of having that relationship with you. One of those clauses is non-compete, okay? I'm always careful when I'm drafting a contract and I know the brand we have, and I know everybody wants to take a bite of it. And one clause I don't joke with is non complete clause. Okay, so if you have that clause, it becomes a legal battle on its own. So for you as a product person, just go ahead, do your, just like you said, try to stand out, but leave it for your legal team, they will handle it. So if a partner sees that you are taking this out with one person, another person will be careful to do the same thing. So it starts from you drafting that contract. You know, so many of us, um, I recall when I joined the FinTech space earlier, the, the, one of the people that interviewed me said, you don't even know this brand. You don't really need a lawyer. Um, this is technical, or like software, blah, 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 blah. And I said, but you do contracts, right? So let's start from there. So, so many of us look down on legal issues. We don't even involve the lawyers. We want to do everything ourselves because we want to reduce costs. So in the cost of reducing the cost, you find out that you have... <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, and another thing, you also look at your confidentiality, your confidentiality clause. And once any of these terms are breached, just hand it over to your legal team. Go ahead with your your brand and let them find it out. You find out that you make money out of them, right? So what I will say is, so pay attention to your legal documents. Okay, make sure you have a lawyer or go to a law firm. Let them read it. Let them give you a standard contract. And in that standard contract, if it's a lawyer that drafted it, they will ensure that people don't take advantage of your brand and. It's not going to take it away, but to reduce the number of people that take advantage of it. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent, pretty good advice. So that would be the